I am Dr. Curtis Henn. I'm an orthopedic hand surgeon at MedStar Orthopedic Institute at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. We treat anything that involves the upper extremity, so anything from above the elbow all the way down to the fingertips. Anything that you can possibly imagine that happens to the hand, forearm, elbow, we take care of. Probably the most common things that we see are arthritis in the hand and wrist, uh, as well as carpal tunnel syndrome, trigger finger, and then tendonitis. I'm a big believer that uh, non-operative treatment is, is the best treatment. I try to envision myself as the patient and I would try to avoid surgery if, if I don't need it. Uh, so I like to treat patients without surgery if we can uh, to make them more comfortable and functional. However, if that doesn't work, then we go, go to surgery and I think patients end up being happier. Uh, I'm happier that we have proven to ourselves that they actually need surgery. For instance, like with trigger finger or uh, arthritis, we try a bunch of other things first from injections, splinting, therapy, sometimes pills. Usually that takes about six weeks, a couple of months, and then, then we prove to ourselves that those aren't working and you still can't do the things you want to do. What I tell patients is the biggest advantage is you may or may not get better with the things that I prescribed to you initially. And if you do get better, that's great. We avoid an unnecessary surgery. If you don't get better, then the only thing we waste is a little bit of each of our time, uh, which to me is worth it if you're gonna prevent an unnecessary surgery. I like the hand and upper extremity because it's a very complex, well-functioning machine when it works perfectly. And there are a lot of different things that can go wrong and trying to figure out exactly what's wrong and then how best to treat it really fascinates me and it makes me excited to go to work. Uh, and then we have real interventions that can help, surgically and non-surgically, and that's fun. When you see the patients after surgery and they're doing better, uh, and it's a very mechanical thing, you know, when you, when you flex your fingers, you, you're literally pulling tendons from your elbow, uh, which is real, really a, a miracle. Uh, and the things that we can do with our hands, from playing the piano to playing a guitar, uh, the flute, is really unbelievable that we can do it normally. And then when something goes wrong, to be able to intervene and get someone back to doing that is, is exhilarating. It's a very common question, and uh, the answer is actually somewhat dependent on the hand surgeon. So to become a hand surgeon, you can either do orthopedic surgery first, or you can do plastic surgery first, and very rarely general surgery, but then we all do an additional year of training in, in just hand surgery. Uh, so I personally did orthopedic surgery and then a year of hand surgery, and then you can kind of decide. Some hand surgeons take care of the shoulder, uh, elbow, humerus, all the way down to the fingertips. Some just do above the elbow. Uh, our practice in general includes the elbow, forearm, wrist, and hand, and anything, anything that can happen to those from trauma, to chronic problems, tendon, tendon problems, arthritis, um, fractures, nerve injuries, vessel injuries, we take care of all of that uh, in the hand and forearm. Normally between joints you have a, a layer of cushioning uh, called cartilage, and arthritis is just breaking down of the cartilage or the cushioning between the joints. Uh, and what happens is, is once you wear that down enough, you start rubbing your bones on each other and it's very painful and can cause stiffness and uh, pain and uh, disability. In general, uh, surgical treatment of arthritis in the hand is, is based basically on pain control. So if you have arthritis in the hand and it's debilitated and you can't sleep at night, you can't do what you want to do with your life, then we consider surgical intervention for arthritis of the hand. Nothing that we have uh, to offer for hand arthritis uh, will improve range of motion. Uh, it may maintain range of motion and maintain grip strength. It may improve it. But in general, we, we save surgery to patients who really are having debilitating pain because our surgeries are very, very good at getting rid of the pain. It depends on where the arthritis is. Uh, if you have arthritis out in the fingers, so this joint or this joint, we tend to uh, fuse the joints uh, so we get the two bones to heal to each other. Now, obviously that prevents them from moving, but it also totally gets rid of the pain. Um, we do have joint replacements for this knuckle and this knuckle, but uh, they're a little less uh, reliable and uh, can 
unlike a knee or a hip replacement, they don't maintain the range of motion, so they still are quite stiff, but also very good at getting rid of the pain. For the wrist, uh, we tend to have uh, mainly fusions, uh, so we uh, ranging from fusing the entire wrist, so you can't move the wrist at all, uh, and that's kind of the kind of the bailout. And then we do a limited wrist fusion where we get some of the smaller bones in the hand to heal to each other. Uh, again, those are very good at treating the pain, uh, but not necessarily good at giving you full range of motion. In general, I tell patients to continue to live their life. Uh, I don't think there's much that we can do um, to try to prevent arthritis. There are various things we try to make it more comfortable to live with arthritis. So the things that we try are injections, splinting, and anything we can do that make, makes your life more comfortable and able to live your life, that's what we try. But there are no real interventions, particularly in hand and wrist arthritis, that uh, prevent the progression of arthritis. What's interesting, though, in arthritis is you can have horrible looking arthritis on an x-ray uh, and even deformity in the hand and you have not much pain uh, and you live your life and then we see you for some other reason and we're like, you have horrible arthritis in your hand and the patient says, well, it doesn't bother me at all. And we don't do anything uh, because we, we want to treat the, we're good at treating the pain. Now that we can have other patients who have, don't have severe arthritis on the x-ray but they have severe pain, then we consider doing something earlier. Carpal tunnel syndrome is compression of one of the nerves at the wrist. So it's the nerve that supplies sensation to the thumb, the index, and the middle finger. And what happens is it gets compressed right at the wrist here. We don't really know why, most of the time, we don't know why it's getting compressed. Uh, and what happens is the fingers fall asleep at night. That's the first sign of carpal tunnel syndrome. So these three fingers fall asleep at night, or they fall asleep during the day when you're talking on the phone, or brushing your hair, or driving a car, or reading a newspaper and then you have to shake your hand out and the numbness goes away. Um, typically the first line of treatment for a carpal tunnel syndrome is putting in a wrist splint because when you bend your wrist it actually increases the pressure inside the carpal tunnel. So most people sleep like this and their fingers fall asleep. So at night we put patients in a wrist splint, anything that basically keeps the wrist straight and then the fingers uh, don't fall asleep as much. Occasionally we'll try steroid injections and then the surgical treatment of carpal tunnel is very, very successful. What we do is make a little incision and we just release the tunnel over the nerve and it gives the nerve more breathing room. Cubital tunnel syndrome is similar to carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's actually compression of a different nerve at your elbow. And that nerve supplies these two fingers. So the ring finger and the small finger are supplied by the ulnar nerve at the elbow. And what happens is that, that nerve gets irritated or compressed and then leads to numbness in the small and ring finger. Um, similar problem to carpal tunnel syndrome, but a different nerve in a different area. In general, uh, I tell patients, if, you have, if you're having constant numbness in the hand, then you're going to want to do something about it. Uh, because once it becomes constant numbness, then surgical treatment of it is a little less predictable. Uh, in that it may or may not get 100% better uh, over time. The other time to consider doing something is if you have weakness in the hand, because uh, that's a sign that it's been going on too long. You're having probably permanent nerve damage, uh, which we want to avoid. Trigger finger is, uh, is a tendonitis, and what happens is, is uh, the tendons that allow you to bend your fingers go into small little tunnels right here on the, ba on the base of your fingers. And the leading edge of the tunnel gets a little smaller or thickened, or the tendon gets a little thicker, and then there's a mismatch in, in the tendon and the tunnel. And what happens is the tendon starts catching on the tunnel every time you flex and extend your finger. So it can feel popping or catching. And what happens is, is once it gets worse, then you flex and you fall asleep like this, and then you wake up and you actually can't extend your finger. You have to pull it out. That's trigger finger. So it's a great problem to have because the treatments we have are very successful. Uh, first, we try steroid injections. 60% of the time, it totally gets rid of the problem. It's not like an injection for arthritis that can kind of be a temporary relief, but then it won't change what's going on in the joint. For a trigger finger, a steroid injection can be curative, and often, more often than not, it is. 
then we'll try a second injection if that doesn't work. And then there's a little surgery where we actually make a little incision and just release the leading edge of the tunnel. And that's greater than 95% effective in getting rid of the problem. There are many different types of fractures in the hand and the wrist. Um, and a lot of the time we try to avoid surgery if we can. Uh, there are certain instances where we do surgery, uh, do recommend surgery, and that's if the fracture is really out of place uh, or that we think we want to get the fingers moving sooner. So those are, would be the two reasons to uh, fix fractures surgically if we can't hold it in alignment with a splint or if we want to move the finger sooner. Because one of the biggest complications after a finger fracture or a hand fracture is stiffness in the finger. Uh, and stiffness is, a, is often a more difficult problem to treat than the fracture itself. So sometimes we fix fractures just to make it stable enough to get the, to get the joints moving sooner and allow the bone to heal. Uh, and then sometimes we fix fractures to try to prevent arthritis or preserve alignment. Uh, in finger fractures in particular, if the fracture is rotated, then what happens is your fingers may cross over uh, if it heals in that manner. So that's often an indication to fix a finger fracture. Um, for a wrist fracture, if it's displaced and then we try to put it back into place, uh, and then it kind of falls off again, then we'll recommend surgery. Most likely you will, but uh, some of the minor surgeries we can do under local anesthesia um, with a little bit of sedation. So you get some IV uh, sedation, you might take a nap, but you won't need a breathing tube. Uh, at the most, you'll have uh, what's called an LMA, and it's not a, not a tube that goes down uh, the throat, it just sits on top of the throat. Um, and then we put in numbing medication at the end, so you're quite comfortable when you wake up. But a lot of the smaller surgeries we can do uh, under a local or regional anesthesia where they actually numb the entire arm uh, and then just give you uh, as much sedation as you want or need. In general, almost all hand surgery is outpatient. Uh, it's unusual for us to have to admit a patient after surgery. Uh, the reason being is we can provide good pain relief with uh, numbing medication after surgery. We give you pain medicine to go home with, uh, and patients are typically quite comfortable and there's no reason to keep them in the hospital uh, overnight. We often see uh, lateral epicondylitis, which is actually tennis elbow, uh, and surprisingly it's not a, a condition that happens often to tennis players, it happens to the run-the-mill run uh, people like you and I. And what it is is an overuse injury of the elbow, and when you're lifting things you have pain on the outside of your elbow here. Um, and in general it does get better, but it's kind of a chronic uh, problem that can last for many months and even up to a year. And very, very rarely do we have to do surgery for it. It tends to go away uh, with the other treatments we have. For tennis elbow, the first line of treatment and probably the most successful treatment and the one that has the most uh, literature supporting it is actually occupational therapy and stretching. So we'll send you to the occupational therapist. We have excellent, excellent occupational therapists here. We send you to them and they work on show you stretches to do at home and then various ways to avoid overusing that side of the elbow. And that would be simple things like when you're lifting something, lift them with your palms up uh, rather than your palms down and that prevents uh, causing uh, stress at this side of the elbow. Um, then we'll try uh, injections sometimes, steroid injections. Uh, and then uh, sometimes splinting helps. Uh, and then lastly, we go to surgery. If, if you really have tried everything and it's been many months and you can't take it anymore, then we do surgery. And the surgery is uh, basically just uh, making an incision over the area that's bothering you. And then we clean out the area that's not, it's, in general, it's a kind of partial tearing of the tendon. We just clean out the area that's not healing. And it, what it does, I think, is incites a healing response. Actually, the surgery is quite successful. I think MedStar Georgetown University Hospital is, an, is a special place. Uh, we have a great group of, uh, like I said, therapists. Uh, the, from the time you hit the door to the time you leave, uh, the nurses in the holding area, the nurses in the operating room, the anesthesiologists, the nurses in the recovery room, uh, all are really invested in your, in your treatment and your happiness. And I think that that's an unusual thing in medical care today and just a nice place to work and a nice place to get taken care of.